Welcome to NGN Nightly. I'm Huma Dimark. This edition Stop Stories. Government to increase resources for contact tracing and testing amid heightened COVID-19 measures. The island's Prime Minister calls on St. Lucians to do the right thing as the nation faces soaring COVID-19 cases. Over the last 14 days, St. Lucia has seen a dramatic increase in the cases of COVID-19. 497 new cases were recorded from August 4th to the 14th, taking the number of active cases in country to 1,025. On Wednesday, 18th August, the Ministry of Health reported 158 new cases and two deaths, bringing the total number of COVID-19 deaths in country to 69 and the total number of COVID-19-related deaths to 28. The deceased star is 69-year-old female from the Denry district and a 79-year-old female from the Grosley district. At a press conference Thursday, Minister of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs Honorable Moses Jabatis stressed that testing and contact tracing remain important tools in mitigating against the spread of the virus. Honorable Jabatis informed that government is working on increasing the resources available to the public health sector. During the period January to March 2021, 17,527 tests were done. And between the period April to July 2021, 22,722 tests were done, an increase of 5,200 tests. We encourage more St. Lucians to get tested. We will increase the testing sites and are seeking support for additional supplies for testing. It is only when we test as many people as possible will we know the full impact of the COVID-19 pandemic here in St. Lucia. I am advised that the Ezra Long Lab now has the capacity to also increase the numbers of tests per day with the acquisition of new and advanced machines. We are in the process of providing additional support to the contact tracing team and to the team which monitors patients in home isolation. Currently, we have only one doctor and four home isolation monitors for the whole of St. Lucia. We will change this situation and make it better. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre says the government is taking a holistic approach to combating COVID-19. However, the cooperation of the general public is crucial. The Prime Minister has called on St. Lucians to take responsibility for their actions. He says vaccination and education are key pillars in the fights. It's very simple. The science has shown that the vaccination plus the public health matters are the only way for now that will stem the surge of COVID. So our first approach is to get people vaccinated and very soon in fact tonight we're going to be having a discussion on vaccination we cannot force people to get vaccinated but we can ask them that vaccination may may save their lives so it's going to be constant education and constant discussion and constant trying to get people to understand that they have to vaccinate for their own good and the good of their families. Health Minister Honorable Moses Jabatis has echoed the Prime Minister's plea for the public to adhere to the COVID-19 measures. I am advised that mass gatherings for social events are still taking place and the leadership of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force have reviewed the situation with a view to ensuring that the owners and organizers of these events some of them very well known, deceased. The contact tracing information has demonstrated, from, has demonstrated that most of the current cases, in fact, a large majority of the cases, have originated from very large social gatherings, mainly in the north of St. Lucia. And the age range most affected is the 25 to 49 age range social activities mainly in the north of St. Lucia, Grosile, Babuno, Castries. 
In addressing government's decisions not to implement stricter protocols, Prime Minister Pierre indicated that the government will not intimidate nationals into compliance, rather encourage people participation in the management of the pandemic. There are thousands of cases in, in, in our court system. What, I'll, I'll, I'll give an example. In traffic cases, there are a number of people who have traffic tickets and the police just don't have the manpower to prosecute them. So it doesn't make any sense that we create that level of animosity. Did, were you, were, did, did you see that animosity, animosity with people being dragged for, for wearing a mask and the fights and saying, what we're saying is that we're trying to encourage people to do what is right for them. And we think that the majority of people in St. Lucia understand that what the government wants for them is good. And I believe in basically in the goodness of mankind. And I think by constant education and constant speaking, not coercion or force, that people will wear the mask and will bring this, on, this scourge under control. But if it doesn't happen, then after consultation with the, the people who matter, the scientists, then we'll take an, another position. But I really believe, I have faith in the people of St. Lucia that they will do the right thing. Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre. Meantime, the national fight against COVID-19 received a major shot in the arm with the arrival of thousands of doses of the Pfizer vaccine from the United States. More from Lisa Joseph. Immunization against COVID-19 is imperative in ending the global pandemic. As such, St. Lucia, like many countries around the world, are ramping up vaccination efforts. A donation of 52,650 doses of Pfizer vaccines now provides St. Lucians who have decided to get the jab with a choice between Pfizer and AstraZeneca. At a ceremony for the arrival of the Pfizer vaccines at the George F. L. Charles Airport, Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre welcomed the assistance of the Government of the United States in St. Lucia's efforts to manage and mitigate against COVID-19. The world's response of shutdowns of social and economic activity and travel bans have been painful and has had a significant collateral effects on our societies and economies. We cannot shut down forever. Though not the only measure, vaccines are currently our best defense amongst a number of other interventions which we have had to adopt personally and collectively. Few people love the idea of taking medicines. However, medicines, like many other technologies, are an indispensable part of today's world. We in the Caribbean have had a long and successful history of using vaccines to protect our people from infectious diseases. Vaccines have enabled society to manage and overcome many diseases like measles, smallpox, polio, yellow fever, among others. U.S. Ambassador to the Eastern Caribbean and Barbados, Her Excellency Linda Tagliatella, reaffirmed President Joe Biden's commitment to St. Lucia, indicating that it was fitting that the first in-person meeting with Prime Minister Pierre began with the vaccine handover. The donation, the U.S. Ambassador said, is a concrete demonstration of the partnership between St. Lucia and the United States. The United States is proud to donate more than 52,000 COVID-19 vaccine doses free of charge to the people of St. Lucia. This is the first tranche of the 169 COVID-19 vaccine doses committed to the St. Lucia. We thank the manufacturer of these vaccines, Pfizer, for the research and the work in making this donation possible. I also want to thank the many people of the United States from the White House to the CDC to my own embassy, who have spent countless hours organizing a whole of government global health campaign to defeat the virus. I want to thank the Prime Minister, the Minister of Health, and everyone on your team for working with the United States and the international community for taking these steps that will restore health and prosperity to the region. Minister for Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, Honorable Moses Shabatis, says the government will roll out new initiatives to encourage vaccination among St. Lucia's young population. These vaccines will specifically will be helpful in vaccinating 
our younger people who are at increased risk from the Delta variant of the vaccine. This vaccination drive will also be useful in facilitating the safe reopening of our schools and continuing the education of our young people. This historic donation to the countries by the United States government will protect the health of people throughout the world who will benefit from these life-saving vaccines. Minister for External Affairs, International Trade, Civil Aviation and Diaspora Affairs, Honorable Alva Baptiste, reiterated the government's appreciation for the timely donation. This generous donation of the United States comes at an opportune moment when the country is experiencing an upsurge in COVID-19 cases. It is my expectation that the donation from the United States will complement the doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine already procured by the government, thus improving people's access and choice to vaccines, decreasing the infection rate and fatalities, improving the health and medical capacity, and bringing economic recovery and social development. These vaccines will be properly administered and allocated to ensure the utmost benefit to the people of St. Lucia. The vaccines, which arrived in St. Lucia on 17th August 2021, is the first tranche of 169,000 doses committed to St. Lucia from the United States of America. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. Sadrika General Insurance has partnered with the Darren Sami Foundation to provide educational tools and supplies to the island's youth. Five students will now get a chance to pursuing their dreams as a result of this initiative. More in this report. The Darren Sami Foundation was launched in July 2016 as a non-profit charitable organization to assist the youth of St. Lucia. Earlier this month, the organization awarded 20 full academic scholarships to deserving students across the island with the assistance of several sponsors, including Sajiko General Insurance. According to the assistant manager for Eastern Caribbean Operations, Mrs. Deborah Rahul, Sajiko General leans very deeply into the overall vision of Sajiko, which is to impact the lives of people in the communities it serves, and the foundation provided the perfect opportunity to do just that. You find that persons, you know, families, their needs have increased or their need for assistance rather, it has increased significantly by persons being affected as a result of the pandemic. So we really saw this as an opportunity to play our part in impacting those lives positively. And based on the, what the foundation has informed us, we will be assisting primary school students and we will actually be able to assist five students with that donation. Vice President of the Darren Sami Foundation, Kathy Daniel Sami, says one of the long-term goals of the foundation is to support the island's youth through education or sports as far as the university level, inter-island sports groups and the Olympics. According to Mrs. Sami, it is extremely encouraging when companies lend their support as more resources can impact more students. Every year we get parents who give testimonies, students who give testimonies. We had about three our last event um, held last week. And it always, it's always a reminder of why we're doing what we're doing. The parents are grateful, the children are grateful. Um, we can see that the impact of the foundation goes a really long way, not only just in you know, school supplies, but just a burden lifted off of the parents' shoulders, even the entire family. And the children themselves are motivated to know that, you know, Darren Sammy has a hand in their education and is backing them 100%. So that, again, pushes them to even do better than before. As part of its corporate social responsibility drive, Surgical General has recently made donations to the Castries Lions Club towards the building of wheelchair ramps in Active Hill and will be launching several of its own initiatives to educate and support communities such as an arts competition associated with climate change and an educational campaign around defensive driving. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchison is up next. Stay with us. 
Caribbean Ties, a connected people then and now. A unique exhibition that presents the diversity and complexity in the Caribbean before the arrival of the Europeans. August 1st to the 31st at the 100-year-old Anglican Annex, open daily, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Be part of the past, still present today, through stunning exhibits accompanied by live cultural street entertainment. Save the dates, August 1st to the 31st. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the Antienne Nouvelle Creole. Monsieur Tain, Homa, Monsieur Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information and Government, cette le ça c'est GIS, ça c'est maybe Television National Pays, NTN, Capoceto Nouvelle en Creole. Capoceto Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement, j'apprends grand démarche pour essayer de batailler et qu'on réduit sérieusement des grèves maladies de corona qui ont augmenté rapidement à cette ci Jeudi bon matin, Premier ministre Honorable Philippe Jepierre, à ce moment-là, ministre de l'Université de Responsabilité pour Santé, Honorable Moses Jebatis, de tenir une consultation. Et puis les travailleurs médias, ça veut dire les journalistes, en cette administration finance pour informer eux concernant les plans qui sont en place. Premier ministre Honorable Philippe Jepierre dit que le gouvernement a placé un pile pèse à son éducation. Il y a aussi un travail pour établir un programme pour encourager plus de monde pour prendre la vaccine. Mais il dit que les membres de cette commande qui ont présenté le gouvernement tout de suite, c'est une décision qui est nécessaire pour arrêter ces cas-là et pour placer cette ci à des positions qui s'en sont. Le ministre de la Santé, nous avons déjà parlé de que le gouvernement a allé par rapport à ce trouvé pour aider à suivre ces directions qui ont un intérêt de la santé. Mais ça, le um, rapport qu'il y a avec ces gens qui ont ministre, ces docteurs, ces gens qui ont fait l'anglais, contact tracing, ça veut dire qu'ils ont gardé quoi la maladie qui a sorti. Nous savons quoi il a sorti. Avec ça, il a dit que c'est une assez grande activité sociale qui a fait un gros îlet, un castrui avec un babouno. Nous avons tous ces limoua et nous avons ces lions qui a sorti. Comme ça, aujourd'hui, en, en conférence presse là, à même là, command center, que ces docteurs avec des formes qu'on cajoune, y a avec police, y a une discussion du bon matin, avec une décision qu'ils prennent. Les décisions qu'ils prennent, y a un premier premier ministre là, avec un nimac qui est pour joindre, avec une décision qu'ils prennent. Qui manière est-ce nous que fuir qu'ils viennent plus court ou bien si nous qu'ils ferment certains bagages. Y en a ces situations concernant les malades de corona. C'est une manière que les gens aussi comblé à avoir l'autopassager. Alors, je me demande, ministre, là, qui plan le gouvernement pour adresser ça? Le ministre a parlé avec ses uh, minibus drivers, il y a la parole et la discussion qui a allé. Mais quand le premier ministre Philippe Jepier, honorable Philippe Jepier, dit, le uh, gouvernement nous plus intéressé à l'éducation avec le travail avec les gens. Donc, peut-être, il y a ces bagages là nous avons regardé, c'est qui nous aider nous aider à laisser les gens peut-être um, mettre Adam Moun là pour make sure um, c'est mon um, un sanitize. Moi, ça, c'est Minibus Association. Ils ont même ça fait ça à l'air. Ils ont même la ni Minibus Driver qui ni un sanitizer à Didan, c'est l'autobus là. Avec ça, c'est un beau bagaille. La ni Moun qui a pris l'argent, ils ont même avec gain bagaille, um, c'est machine là pour mettre dans la Minibus là. Comme ça, nous ne pouvons continuer à parler vite avec eux pour qui manier le gouvernement ça aide. Pour, pour tout le monde um, sanitaire et le monde sain et sauve, ça n'a pas à faire. Le gouvernement nouveau, en cette ci a considéré pour établir un système d'éducation qui est sans paiement les étudiants. C'est le ministre qui a une responsabilité pour l'égalité et la justice sociale, honorable Joachim Henry, qui fait annoncement ça là, durant une cérémonie pour les membres du Parlement qui ont sermenté la semaine passée. Selon le ministre Henry, le gouvernement a commencé à se placer là pour aider à payer, premièrement, faciliter qu'on livre et l'autre la brise pour les étudiants, aussi pour écrire l'examination mathématique et anglais. Sur so, les nous, quand nous décidons pour payer si exi pour mathématiques et anglais, c'est ma maille là, c'est un commencement. Nous avons mouvement de direction parce que nous voulons encourager ma maille. 
participer à l'éducation côté yoka ou yoka font contribution en commencement côté nous qui continuer pour exister comme pays um, aussi bien um, à, à deux trois semaines pour point avant l'école ouverte nous qui garder côté nous ça bail ouédé um, livre l'école nous une forme ministre la moins responsable à qui garder ça c'est au cas mon cas étant côté mon cas dit c'est mon HCC Um, yo, si vous avez écouté HS um, Open Bill pour li, pou, pou faire livre l'école, côté nous apporter le chômage de ces gens. Les citoyens, c'est les siens. C'est les siens qui ont trouvé un bon conseil de santé pour être capable de faire bataille contre deux ou trois maladies qui vivent dans deux mondes pour tout le temps. C'est les gens qui vivent. Ça, c'est maladie comme le cycle cell, maladie chèvre, pour les diazos, ou les autres. Je ne sais pas si nos qui est ça pour Paris Denry, ça c'est nos Yolanda Alcindor, déclare que l'année en l'eau, c'est le sien qui a souffert et puis stroke, tension, ça veut dire pressure, et puis ça doit aussi cancer et mal -tier. Et qui est très important pour vous connaître si vous si avez plusieurs ces maladies, ça et manière pour vous traiter ces maladies. Parce que um, là où vous savez où vous bonnet, ou ça manager pour empêcher qu'on joue ça nous a créé complications et nous savons en chaîne de ces complications et pour déjà jouer ni ou pas ça oui vesli ou pas ça fait venir plus mais ni pour contrôler maladie pour empêcher venir plus mauvais selon nos alcédor ça qui est bien important pour mon connaître c'est pour gagner à bout ces maladies là et ben pour placer Bawad pour vous. C'est pour vous adopter une bonne habitude de nourriture. Ça veut dire que les gens qui peuvent apprécier ni en ces maladies, et eh bien, docteur, j'ai découvert que ni ces maladies, c'est pour vous immédiatement changer l'habitude de nourriture. Ça veut dire pour vous tenir une vie active, pour exercer tous les jours, à manger bien, manger en chai légime. Um, couper à sous quantité manger à qui processer nous ca manger um, ou ça boire glow dormi bien um, servi sous ca servi alcool servi en modération um, pour pas fumer et puis bagaille comme ça ça ca tient nous en bon santé pour empêcher nous développer maladie en um, chronic diseases eh bien, monsieur madame ça c'est côté nous pour votre nouvelle là pour aujourd'hui je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation. Je vous remercie encore. Si vous conservez la vie, je vous remercie pour vous donner une autre nouvelle. À quoi vous remercie? Parce que vous remercie pour vous donner une autre nouvelle. Merci à Peel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You could catch up with us anytime on the Government of St. Lucia Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Humadi Mark.